Singapore is investing some $71 million to nurture manpower in artificial intelligence with the goal of growing the local talent pool. Up to 1,500 small and medium-sized enterprises also stand to benefit from the opening of three new innovation centers where they can test bed and develop technology solutions. These were announced by Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet at the opening of the Singapore Week of Innovation and Technology. Brandon Tanoto tells us more. The new innovation centres focus on three growth sectors, built environment, urban agriculture and beauty and personal care. With a total of 11 such centres now, SMEs have access to resources like lab facilities, training and consultancy services. Since 2006, these centres have supported such businesses in the completion of 300 tech projects. Mr Hing says the foundation is to enable firms to go digital. But for these businesses to thrive, there must be innovation as well as development of new products and solutions. For many innovating SMEs, what they need is access to mature, ready-to-scale technologies and facilities where they can test out new products. There is no one way to help our SMEs innovate and thrive, but we must address their specific needs and circumstances so that innovation is pervasive and benefits many more people. Still, a lack of talent, especially in areas like deep tech, remains a key barrier to innovation. Mr Hing said this demand for skills in areas of new technology is something education systems worldwide are trying to keep pace with. The challenge is a structural one. The traditional feedback loop for developing new skills, from industry to academia to curriculum, and years of full-time learning by students before they graduate simply cannot cope with the pace of change. To this end, Mr Hing said Singapore is stepping up investment in AI manpower with a further $71 million. This aims to double the number of apprentices under the AI apprenticeship program in the next five years, from the 200 trained so far. A new National Research Foundation Fellowship for AI will also be created to attract top researchers to Singapore to pursue breakthrough research. And for more on this, we're joined now by Tan Bun Kim. He's Executive Director, Startup and Innovation Ecosystem at Enterprise SG and Ted Chen, co-founder of a startup here in Singapore. Good evening to both of you. Mr Tan, let's, uh, let's uh, get to you first. We've seen three new centres for, for innovation being set up in three new sectors as well. How specifically were they identified, these sectors? Well, these are the sectors where we have our in industry transformation map and we looked at them and see that there is the greatest potential for these centers of innovation to uh, support SME innovation. So we, we've uh, worked with the polytechnics uh, with a competitive bidding process and then uh, identify them, resource them and enable them to really uh, scale up their support for SMEs. Mr. Tan, we've had this conversation about the importance of startups and SMEs uh, sort of booting up as far as their digital capacity and understanding is concerned, the, the adoption of it even. Why is that so important? I mean, why do we keep saying uh, that they are going to be left behind? Well, the pandemic has shown us that enterprises were able to adapt and innovate, um, you know, to to identify market gaps are those that emerge stronger from it. And digitalization during the pandemic is really one way for them to do so. And looking ahead, you know, we really want to just equip all our SMEs with this kind of uh, ability and agility to innovate and um, to be able to grow their capabilities and stay ahead of the game. Uh, Ted, let's bring you in on the conversation now. Sustainability is another important story for Singapore. Uh, your startup took part in the Sustainability Open Innovation Challenge that was in 2019. Tell us more about uh, the project that uh, your startup worked on uh, for the Pan Pacific Hotel involving zero food waste. Yeah, so traditionally, uh, my company, Evercom, we focus more on energy efficiency. But with the opportunity of uh, open innovation challenges, we managed to apply the same technology that we have and put it into food waste. So for the particular project, you know, we apply data analytics 
um, computer vision to see that from the waste generated um, from buffet, from all these restaurants, um, exactly what percentages is um, really avoidable and, and which are the percentages that can be further cut down. So this gives the data um, to the chef, um, to the hotel, to the restaurants to be able to further fine tune their menus, um, as well as cutting down on food waste. Tell us something about what that research involved, Ted. I mean, did you have to approach a specific number of uh, sort of F and B uh, sort of outlets, or or in terms of uh, studying just how much uh, food wastage they had in order to collect the data that you needed. You needed quality data for this. Yeah. So as part of the innovation challenges, we really have to work with hotels. Um, from day one and, and and really being facilitated by the by the program. So we have to understand, you know, what kind of menus they have, what are the ingredients they use, and more importantly, you know, when we talk about adopting innovations, um, how do we make um, the, the adoptions of data tracking um, almost disappeared from their daily operations? Because the last thing that the, 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 the people at the restaurant wants is to be able to operate another machine during a very busy schedule. So these are the practical challenges that we have to work closely with the whole Hotels, through the innovation challenges to be able to implement full waste tracking and that also doesn't add too much burden to the to the to the staff over there. Mr. Tan, uh, back to you now. Uh, part of this uh, conversation is about innovation uh, and we heard earlier DPM Heng Su Kit talking about uh, you know the, the need for talent as far as innovation is concerned. It's all about ideas. Uh, we don't want Singapore or Singapore's SMEs to be left behind with this. Are they getting the support that they truly need in order to build up this ecosystem where innovative ideas can grow? Yes, and uh, earlier as well, you know, when Ted was sharing, uh, open innovation, we find that that is a win-win that allows not only our SMEs, right? Uh, like the Sustainability Open Innovation Challenge this year, we've made available resources of over 2.8 million to develop uh, you know, innovative solutions. And this uh, actually, these are the resources that our SMEs have to, to work with, to have proof of concepts, to, to test on that. So I think we are providing a lot of opportunities where they can have product market fit, work with larger corporations to understand the real pain points and to be able to help tap on the networks and resources of these larger corporates to grow their companies as well. So I think, yes, and also in talent, we are working with the, uh, various means in providing skilled talents for our SMEs and startups, uh, whether it's through um, you know, attachments of scientists uh, research, those with the relevant capabilities to these startups to provide them with the boost that they need. Mr. Tan, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, both of you, for joining me in this conversation. Tan Boon Kim there from Enterprise SG and Ted Chen, co-founder and CEO of Evercom. That's a startup here in Singapore.